Hey everybody, welcome back. In this final part of my Python project structure video series, I'm gonna look at extending the app we built just a little bit, but using a general framework that you can use for all of your applications or scripts that you write in Python. What we're gonna be doing is adding a domain folder to group all of the domain logic for our app, a uh, services folder, which is gonna have all of the sort of logic of our app, and then an adapters folder, which is gonna include things that are external to our app that we wanna bring in and use in here. This is a general purpose framework that you can use to structure your projects. I got this idea from this architectures book for Python. The ideas discussed in this book apply to big monolithic systems that are really complicated. There's advanced topics like a unit of work. They have a lot of abstractions that make these really big systems work nicely. So if this is so complicated and advanced, why am I talking about it? Well, there's a few basic ideas that I gleaned from here, which I apply to my projects and basically just help me structure things. So I've already talked about them in my own words, but I'm gonna use the author's words. There's a domain layer. This defines the business logic. In our case, with our example of a shopping cart with fruits in it, the business logic is this concept of a fruit and a shopping cart. These are our domain entities. Next, we'll have a service layer. This defines the jobs the system should perform and orchestrates different components. In our case, we wanna add items to the shopping cart and remove them. That's pretty much it. So that's our service layer. Although the authors have more in here, the last one that I use regularly is an adapters layer. Concrete implementations of an interface that goes from our system to the outside world. All right, so the authors are describing this as a way of, of, of their system talking to the outside world. This could be like a database integration where you want your system to write data to a database. But for me, I also use adapters to pull data in from the outside world. So let's go ahead and restructure our project to work like this. It's really easy. First, I'm gonna hop into our shopping cart and make these folders that I've been describing. I'll have one for domain, services, and adapters typing. Inside of each of these, I'm gonna put an init file. And now the fruit file, we just wanna put this directly into adapters, into here. Okay, let's move my shopping cart now into services. Let's check out fruit. Oops, I accidentally put that in adapters. Okay, that's in domain. This is clearly like a domain entity and shopping cart is like a service, right? So I put that in here, but I've got this domain object inside of here. Let's move that over. Shopping cart, py. Let's open that and paste. And this is good because fruit is local now, right? To this domain. So we've, we've got all our domain stuff together in one place. And now I, I just want to make sure we get rid of it here. Get rid of that. Probably don't need data classes. Now I don't have my shopping cart. Yet. I'm going to go into my domain, shopping, import, shopping cart. So here's my project. So if I run my app, so it's not finding a module named shopping cart dot shopping cart anymore. And maybe this is my init files. I never updated that. So let's go back. In this init file, I'm grabbing some stuff from shopping cart now in my services layer. So I have to update that. And for fruit, that's in my domain now. So let's try it again. Fruit is not defined. I suppose what I did do inside of my shopping cart service, I probably have a fruit object here. Just instead of shopping, Cart, I want fruit, right? And uh, I'll do it this way, just grab it like that. It's still feeling pretty good. Uh, I'm not really gonna think too much about it. Let's try and run it again. Great, it worked. So my app is still working after refactoring it. Well, let's throw together a quick example on the fly of how we might wanna have an adapter for this application. Let's imagine we're like an e-commerce website where users will have a shopping cart. What you might wanna do is classify those users for like a propensity of how valuable they are. Maybe all the items in the shopping cart are worth like a lot of money. So we should kind of identify that. Let me go ahead and build this starting in the services layer, score shopping cart, and let's add some documentation. Assign a score to the shopping cart based on the contents. Like the other functions here, we want to add a shopping cart. So we're passing in like what our current cart is. Now what I want to do is score it. Here's where our adapters layer is going to come in. So I'll say from adapters score, and I'm going to say import shopping cart score. 
So notice I'm using camel case, or rather like Python convention for an object. Go ahead and initialize it in here. Score dot score, and I'm gonna pass in my cart. This will provide me score. I'll call it cart score. I'm gonna assign this to the shopping cart object. Let's remind ourselves of what that looks like. So now I could have a score down here and I'm gonna call that int. It's gonna be an integer score and it's gonna to default to none because we don't need to have a score when we're initializing the shopping cart. Let's go back to our services, cart.score equals this. Assigning score cart score. Okay, so what do we have to do now? Well, this shopping cart score doesn't exist. We need to create it and we need to make sure that it has this right method. I'm gonna create a score file and we know we need these things. So class shopping cart score is gonna come in here and this is gonna to have to do some stuff. This is gonna to have to have this method. Okay, it's gonna take in itself and a cart. When we initialize this, I'm not gonna actually do anything when we initialize this. And then for this guy here, um, we need to make sure he's returning an integer. I could just say that score is gonna equal, and I could say item dot price for item in cart dot items. And I could say or zero, because the price might be none. And then I could just sum those up and I could return that as a score. One last thing I wanna do is pass that as an integer, or I guess to, this would be more in line with the Zen of Python to do things this way. Pretty happy with, with everything here, even though I'm not really using in my initialization method in general, I might wanna do that. Now, one other thing I might wanna do here is say from domain dot shopping cart import go here and explicitly say what we're passing in here. Um, let's see if everything uh, works. If I run my app, that seems to be working. The thing is my app's not actually doing anything. We're gonna need to import that. So if I go back to my services, here it is. So score shopping cart is what I want. Put that here, okay. So I'm just gonna import it along with everything else. And then if I go to the end and grab the names, now where am I doing it? Okay, so now I wanna score this and I wanna score my cart. And that was it, I didn't have any other arguments. So after I do that, if I print my cart again, and I'll just say print, and we'll be able to see that. Let's see if it'll work. It can't import that. I believe it's because I didn't add it to my init. Okay, so score shopping cart. Cool, let's see. So here it's assigning a score of zero because um, I have no prices. When I add my fruits, I'll just assign some arbitrary prices, say $99 because these are the most fantastic fruits in the world. And there's my score of 198. You could stop watching here and I wouldn't blame you. And if you do, I thank you for going this far with me. I would really appreciate it if you consider giving these videos a like or maybe subscribing to my channel if you like this content. As a new channel, this really helps me get visibility. If you liked my layout with the terminal, I have another video on using Vim and Tmux and how I've configured these things. It will send your productivity into an absolute spiraling death. I mean, um, I mean, uh, you should check that out. A little bonus, the last thing I'm gonna do is make this adapter better. We might wanna have different ways of scoring things. What I've created here is more of like a base score. It's almost more like a unit test, really. I make a new folder and I'm gonna call it scores, uh, plural. And then inside of here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna copy this guy and I'm gonna put it in here, delete. I wanna call this a base score. Rename it and I'm gonna rename it base, I guess, dot .py. Call this base shopping cart score. I'm gonna have to go down an additional level. So I'll add another dot there. Where am I going with this? Well, I might wanna have different scores. I'm gonna copy this guy and I'm gonna paste it. What do we wanna call another score? Apex, I don't know what that means. But let's say we have some model, we called it Apex. Okay, so let's call that Apex shopping cart score. So I could imagine a, a one situation where I have a different project set up for this Apex. And I could say from Apex score import shopping cart score. And then I could go down here and where I have score shopping cart, I just wanna return the Apex call to 
shopping cart score. We're assuming that we have this somewhere else on our system. And all we wanna do is call that here. And so this adapter lets us do that in a nice structured way. So we have our Apex shopping cart score object, and we also have a base scoring object, which does the same thing. It has a scoring shopping cart function. So these are implementing the same thing, which is gonna be important for what we do next. So I'll have score.py. So in here, I'm gonna create a new function, score shopping cart. I want a function that's gonna bring in my objects from my subfolder in this case, from dot scorers. And then I'll do the same thing for base. Now in here, I want a score type yes, stream. I'm gonna return a score, a union of one of these. So basically it means it's one of these two things. This is not really super clean. I wouldn't actually wanna do it this way, but I'll say if the score type is equal to APEC, bring that into our application. And else, if this is base, like that. Okay, good. Everybody's happy from typing of union. If we haven't returned anything, I'm going to raise a value error and a type. And just a little exclamation mark. And actually, what I really want to do is I want to get the scar. This is going to return an object, and then I'm going to have to call that object still. So by doing this, the last thing I want to do is fetch that here, and I can say in my init file for adapters, I'll say from scorer, I'll import um, get scorer, and uh, let's go down and implement that in our services. Now, in my adapters file, I just put that in my init file, this get scorer. I can just fetch that directly out of my adapters now. Here is the shopping cart scorer. No longer like that, it's get scorer, and I need a scorer type, so scorer type. And we're gonna use, um, let, let's surface this type up to here and score type and it's gonna be like a string we said. So now that just kind of is gonna get passed in from here. Oops. Do, do, do. Okay, happy with that. And we're gonna score our cart based on this score, which is returned from here. Now we need to add the score type to our app. Wherever I score my shopping cart here, um, I need my score type to be defined. What I could do is make this a global variable in, in, my, in my app here. And I, I'm gonna say we're gonna use the base one. We know what to expect. If I've done everything right, this should just work. Okay, it's saying no module named Apex Scorer. Oh, <laughs> well, of course there's no module named Apex Scorer because we just created that, right? It, it, it doesn't actually exist. For the purposes of getting this working, let's just like, I don't know why I didn't see that coming. Leave that and say we'll return zero and implement score. Let's see if that does the trick. Uh, score shopping cart is missing a cart arg argument. Okay, yeah, this is a weird one. This is an object, or uh, this is a class. You could call it score class, just so you understand what's happening, right? And I need to initialize that. I was not doing that. That's what I want to do. Okay. We're working here. This is fantastic. And one last thing I could do just for my own edification is in my app, I want to try the other score type, our awesome Apex model, which returns zero, like we see here. Oh yeah, okay. This was a lot of fun. As you can see, it's got quite dark outside. I have another video that talks about my Tmux and my Vim config, which has eaten up massive hours of my evenings this week. And I think Vim and Tmux configs could eat up massive hours of your evening as well. It has been fantastic to go through this demo, and I hope you take these ideas and use them in your coding and build better Python applications. Thanks so much, and see you in the next one.